As 5G networks mature and operators continue to embrace open cloud-oriented technology options, we're starting to see the deployment of new mobile network architectures, new names enter the radio access network sector, and accelerated innovation in the mobile networks technology market. To find out more about these trends, I'm talking today with Rob Sony, Head of RAN Architecture at VMware. So Rob, great to talk to you today. Uh, things are changing fast in the RAN market, with new names entering the sector as carrier-grade software-oriented elements become an option for operators. Uh, based on your engagement with the market and VMware's development of its RAN Intelligent Controller, or RIC, what are you seeing in the market? How do you see the ecosystem changing and developing? Well, I think the, what we're starting to see already is a really a fantastic opportunity for a new ecosystem of companies to enter and create new opportunities for operators to innovate in how they deploy, operationalize, and ultimately monetize their networks. And we've seen significant new entries from a variety of companies, some well-established, well-funded startups, but also some that are brand new, that are introducing new ideas about how to create that kind of uh, unbelievable experience for the end user uh, with the RAN Intelligent Controller essentially driving, controlling what is a heavily disaggregated network with Open RAN. And what does all this mean for the network operators? And there's lots of talk about greater innovation in the RAN market, but is there any evidence of that right now? So I think, you know, coming back to the questions about, you know, these sort of three pillars of where can you bring innovation opportunities for carriers, um, we can see that operators have traditionally always wanted to look for opportunities to improve um, the value of the spectrum that they've deployed. There have been a variety of technologies that have been explored over the years. The RAN Intelligent Controller gives you really an opportunity to start to exploit those opportunities in a way that is decoupled from the traditional RAN roadmap. So we can bring spectrum efficiency gains, for example, so increase the value of that spectrum uh, that they've deployed and they spend a lot of money and energy on optimizing. This now starts to become something that they can automate and integrate. We're working carefully with a partner uh, called Cohere, uh, which offers an innovative massive MIMO solution, beamforming solution, that ultimately will give operators that opportunity to increase spectrum efficiency um, and decouple that capability from the traditional RAN roadmap, which can often uh, limit the rate at which innovation can take place. We're also working with another startup, uh, Pulte, which provides an opportunity to get insight into the location of subscribers directly from the RAN, um, obfuscating uh, the individual identities, but also providing some real deep insight into where traffic is in the network, and more importantly, where it isn't. So Pulte gives an opportunity for both the enterprise as well as the CSP to ultimately get a new insight into where data can come from. But it doesn't stop there. There are dozens of companies out there that we are working with um, that offer the opportunity to take what was traditional legacy centralized SON and move it forward and help operators, Greenfield as well as Brownfield legacy operators, introduce new exciting capabilities in their network for the optimization of the network, going from what was traditionally um, cell level SON or network level SON into user level SON to create that really unique experience for the sets of subscribers that they can ultimately turn into money and valuation for them. Uh, the RIC is regarded as a significant enabler of innovation in the RAN space. Uh, what's your view on how the RAN Intelligent Controller can impact the sector? And what are you hearing from operators in this regard? So first of all, there's an immense amount of interest from operators around the world on trying to leverage the RAN Intelligent Co Controller both for open RAN networks, uh, but also for traditionally deployed RAN or legacy RAN networks. So the requirements have come uh, really from two very direct and distinct streams with two different sets of requirements. If you look at sort of the greenfield operator, they're looking for innovation opportunities and monetization opportunities, but also to rapidly optimize the network. For the traditional operators, what they're looking to solve is a problem that they've had for, for years of being able to unify data across the network and get real uh, visibility and performance, irregardless of who the vendor is and who's providing that uh, ultimate network function that exists within the network, whether it's traditional RAN or it's virtualized RAN. Now, the RIC, of course, is associated with next-generation open RAN architectures. 
But what about legacy RAN architectures? Uh, how is the industry bridging current RAN resources with virtual resources? So creating visibility into legacy RAN um, across the network is an age old problem. Um, Non-uniformity of what we would call FCAPs or data models, uh, as well as control and configuration and management of the network across the vendors that exist within the network is a hard problem. Um, we've been working very closely with a partner, Cellwise, who's come up with an abstraction model to essentially allow us the capability to deliver intelligence across the network, whether it's legacy RAN or, or traditional RAN, uh, legacy operator or greenfield operator, uh, be able to abstract out the differences across not particularly just RAN, but also transport, which becomes more integrated directly into the RAN network itself, uh, even possibly visibility into the core. So it gives us an opportunity really to optimize the RAN with a unique framework across the vendor stratum, essentially creating a multi-vendor universe where we can sit on top of that as VMware and ultimately create the intelligence platform that's needed to be able to uh, ultimately simplify operations of the network, uh, increase the uh, overall opportunities for innovation and uh, monetization in the network. And what about advances in RAN performance? Are there any developments worth noting here? So, so far we've talked a lot about um, how the RIC itself or the RAN Intelligent Controller can ultimately offer opportunities uh, for uh, improvements in performance, improvements in op uh, operations. Uh, we introduced a platform uh, in uh, earlier last year called TCP RAN. Uh, this is our telco cloud platform, which ultimately is tailored specifically to the needs of the radio access network. The radio access network introduces unique requirements on cloud platforms in terms of latency, in terms of scaling and footprint, and then in terms of automation and orchestration. Um, we have created, uh, again, we, we're gonna use the word abstraction one more time. We've created an abstraction of the physical hardware to allow for the onboarding of silicon devices, uh, and particularly that from Intel offering now the offload of forward error correction coding uh, below the substrate of what the typical server would have visibility in as a separate companion card. That Mount Bryce innovation ultimately allows us to support the demanding use cases for massive MIMO that are required to enable RAN at scale in the network. So we've enabled and uh, brought in Mount Bryce innovation from our partner as, at Intel. Uh, we're also looking carefully at the other opportunities that have now been made public by other partners at Marvell, at NVIDIA, and at Qualcomm to introduce uh, yet more innovation opportunities to increase the um, essentially the, the data rates and improve the ability to sustain the very low latency applications that are required by 5G. Rob, great to talk to you today. Thanks for your update on what's happening in the RAN sector. Well, thank you also, Ray. I really appreciate uh, the opportunity to speak to you today.